Elijah ascended into heaven with the chariots of fire. Somebody say chariots of fire. 2007 was one of the greatest time in ministry where I pray to the Lord that the cherubims from his throne come into the service. I was very young, passionate for the Lord, always praying. But when I asked this, this was the first time I ever demanded for this. I don't know what happened, but everybody, including the psalmist, those who were playing, were crying like a baby. I don't mean weeping, they were crying like a baby. The fire broke out in the atmosphere. It scared everyone, scared myself. Because a holy fire was released in the atmosphere. Some of you have been having problems pressing on in God. Some of you are so dry in the spirit. Because your physical appetite has been awakened so strongly. And the things of the Lord has become very shallow. Amen. Some of you prepare yourself because this fire now will transport you to, to, a, 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 to the cave. It will isolate you from carnality. It will isolate you from lukewarmness. Anything that wants to kill your fire, it will separate you from. The fire of God will separate wrong people from your life. The fire of God will separate. Amen. Can you hear me? Enough of in, hallelujah. The fire of God is about to bring a demarcation between anybody that kills your fire. Anybody that will be a voice of destruction in your life. The fire of God will shut it down. You will see that sometimes you want to reach out to, to those people who have been sent to reduce or to make your fire impotent. And even as they call, somehow you will not even hear that phone ring. God will begin to separate you from that nonsense. Then somebody say nonsense. Hallelujah. Somebody say nonsense. You don't need to hear all kinds of phone calls. You don't need to hear all the details of the church. You don't even, some of you, you hear all the gossip in the city. Amen. All the gossip. It's so funny. You, if I call a sister now, she can give me details of 15 pastors in the church in, in, in Minnesota. She can give details to details. What brought them down? The, what they are going through right now? 15 pastors are great, are great testimony of their downfall. A great testimony of what they are going through, of their crisis. She can give me 50 different 15 pastors, different their lifestyle, what they are dealing with, their struggles. She can dissect it and give it to me. That's spirit of gossip. You're not an intercessor, you are, a, you are an accuser of the bedroom, a satanist, accomplishing devil's task. You are you don't destroy, you're not building the work of God, you are destroying the work of God. You are carrying hell within your body. Jesus said, upon this rock will I build my church. But you are scattering the church of God. You are an enemy to God's work. You're not a prayer machine. You're not supporting the church with prayers. Neither with your finances. You are there supporting the church with your mouth. Announcing, broadcasting, destroying the church. And you think that when the church is going up in fire and they are fasting, you think that God will not count you among them, among the Sabbath and Tobiah. When God is sending fire, God will not count you among them. Jesus, Jesus, Abraham's life, Abraham's wife was touched by the king, and God himself bypassed the king, began to deal with everyone in that household because of the king's mistake. Thank God the king was sensitive and revealed to him in a dream. Some of us don't even dream again. How would the God speak to us in our dream? Some of you have messed up, some of you need to confess. Not just to your husband, not just to your wife, not just to the man of God. You need to confide the mistakes you've done and make atonement for it. If not, fire will not fall. You will not be counted worthy until you confess. Someone say confess. Confession is needed to, 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 when you have, the Bible says confess your sins with one another, that you what you may be healed. Healing, guaranteed healing will not come until you've opened your mouth and confessed. That is why Catholics, Catholic people, that's why they, they get this thing right. They know how to confess before the priest. 
They're not to show honor before the priest. When the Catholic priest is talking, you people don't criticize him. Whether he's gay or that, you will receive everything. Some of you open your mouth and this, you, you, you let him put his communion in your mouth. You, he opens your mouth and you put it with his finger. You don't know whether it's washed or not. He says, ah, thank you, Father. Then you come to the Pentecostal, we preachers. You begin to dissect. Once he says, money, you, you, you block the phone, you hang up. He's a false preacher. Who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you that? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Don't be like that. Have a reference like the way the Catholic people have referenced their priest. Have the same reference. Have the same reference like the way the Catholic priest and the way they, they reference the pastor. Those days when I was in the Catholic church, they would say, uh, stand up, stand up for Jesus. I say, ah, this is the father coming. Why are they saying stand up for Jesus? Please let me sit down. What kind of honor is this? But everybody will show you honor. Now we come to the Pentecostal ways. They show you the Bible now. They show you how to reach Christ. You become so arrogant now. You are telling the priest or the pastor how to live life. What is right and what is not right. Well, the Bible says, obey. Obey your prophet. Believe in them. And he shall what? He shall prosper. Just by believing. Just by trusting. And Jesus says, who do you men say I am? Who do you men say? And what do you think? He says, you are the son of living God. He says, okay, upon this rock. Why? By identity, you connect. If you don't identify the Christ in him, who that receives the prophet? He that receives a man of God, he that receives a friend, in the name of a friend, receives a friend reward. So it's based on what you see in the man of God. If you see filth and flesh, that will be your reward. And if you see the glory inside of him, that becomes your reward. If you see carnality, that will become your reward. If you see weakness, that will become your reward. Because Moses' sister did not receive any anointing. But there were people like Joshua who believed on Moses, even though of his weakness. Just, just believe in the God that was behind Moses. How can a man, Moses, manifest? Even myself, I was asking the question, how can Moses manifest himself during that time? And you let, you let God literally thunder that blast in your place. God began to speak loudly. You watch, you look at the hills, the mountain, you see the cloud of God's glory. The rainbow come down, the glory of God, the carbon of his presence. Moses come before you, you see his eyes, glory shining. You cover his face. And this same man, you open your mouth and start talking about him. Something is wrong with you. The rebellion is so strong. Some people, their rebellion is so strong that they see a man of God, whether he's walking in glory or not, they see a lot of their flesh mess up. And they come on that swift judgment because of that nonsense. You don't need that. Use that energy towards the man of God. Use it. Some of you are going on Facebook now, going on, there's a man of God talking about tithes, left and right. Using tithes, nonsense, you don't have to go into a place of prayer and be reviving people. You are there trying to release confusion in the church. Hallelujah. It's stupid ideologies. If Paul was alive, Paul would say, depart from such men because they have erred from the gospel. And so some of you carry such messages, start spreading it all over Facebook, all over WhatsApp. Spreading it. That's rebellion in the house of God. God will not doesn't control such nonsense. That's like an angel exposing other angels. What kind of rubbish is that? You even go as far as showing men of God. That is nonsense. Right there, the spirit of the truth should show you that this is wrong. But because people are so greedy, some people are greedy. When it goes to finances, okay, yes, let's show this man of God. This man of God is talking truth. Who told you that? When Acre brothers left, they start talking about doctrines. When fire enters a place, you tight is not is no issue. Because all you are concerned is moving the kingdom, populating heaven. Hallelujah. Stop this nonsense. Because people they, they, they have itching ears, itching gospel. So much people are not hungry anymore. No hungry. No hungry. No hungry. And if you live like this, nobody will be able to feed you. Because all you'll be searching for is an angel from heaven. Or else. The greatest men of God have the, the listen to me. Every the greatest men of God that come before you are the simplest men of God. Can I use the word again? Are the simplest men of God. The word simple means when they pray for you, they will say, In the name. The way they talk to you, oh, bless you in the name of Jesus. I've met, I've been privileged to meet the greatest men of God on the earth. Sadhu, prophet. 
when he prays for you, you say, okay, brother, come. I will kneel down. No, please stand up. I say, sir, let me kneel down. The way he deals with you, you have to pinch yourself. Who is this man? Why is it so simple? Is he, is he really anointed? Or are they just, is he just telling all kinds of stories? When I was in the Philippines with him, all the pastors were standing, waiting for him to sit down. He looked at me, he said, oh, sit down. He picked a banana, gave it to me. I'm looking at him like, ah, it is not the man that sees Jesus. Why is it so simple? And such people, it's so easy to disrespect them. Because they don't carry themselves like this. They're so easy. He spoke to me, he says, oh, I didn't even know. I booked my, my hotel in Dubai. You know, I didn't even know that when I was going for his conference, I didn't even know that the same place I was booking, he was also booking in that hotel. And it so happened to be two elevators above me, or two rooms above me. And so, one time I was going for breakfast, he, he was entering the elevator too. I was shocked. Whoa. I mean, I was just shocked. But, he invited me out with him, and you know, very familiar. But, I'm the one to watch myself, not to be familiar like him. If not, I will cut off myself from his glory. Now, God is watching him not to be arrogant, but to be very humble and to be approachable to everybody so that everybody can reach out to him, even children. And that's what women of God ought to do, to be very simple and to be approachable. Now, men of God, the reason why we get arrogant and the reason why we don't want people to be familiar is because they don't know how to respect themselves or respect the man of God when they get familiar with him. They get close to him and then they start to, oh, they never call him pastor anymore. Oh, Behiri. Oh, Barry. And you expect the anointing to rub off on you. It doesn't work like that. I have noticed something about me. When I go to churches and they call me Behiri, or they call me uh, Pastor Behiri, I don't even see the prophetic anointing come forth. I don't even intend to prophesy. But when somebody begins to call me prophet, 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 something is unlocked. I don't know what it is. Because they see something that I don't see. Amen. And they begin, the Bible says wisdom is like deep waters. And a man of understanding draws it out. Meaning, you may have so much wisdom inside of you. But until I tap into that wisdom, that wisdom cannot be unlocked. Somebody hearing me today. Until I unlock the wisdom of God through questions. If I don't ask you questions, if I don't get hungry for what you carry, it can never flow to me. I might try, try and try. It will never flow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I beg of you. I beg of you this season. Remove the clock. Be very hungry. Be very hungry for God. If anything should turn you off. Or any message that is turning you off. Examine that message. Examine the message. Is he trying to build you up? Is it, does it look critical? Is it fleshly or is it carnal? Hallelujah. Amen. You must examine the things. When I... Listen to me. When I, when I went into Dr. Lukoya's uh, office, he wasn't carrying himself like a big man. So simple. Laughing with me. Oh, really? Oh, I'm simple. But when he was come to, to release the fire, he was a different man. I said, ah. It will be so easy, if you're in the flesh, it will be so easy to take him casual. Very casual. Hallelujah. When you're in Israel, you arrive... Sadu waits for you and receives you as you're entering the hotel. Oh, welcome, my brother. And he listens to his hands. And you're like, it is not the man that's commanding nations. Very simple. There are some pastors here now. You call them four times, five times, they won't pick up their phone. Why? Because they've seen that people have disrespected them, dishonored them, rubbish them anyhow. And then you still want to you them to now pray for you and bless you out of their heart. But any little mistake that they make, you are ready to leave them, ready to depart, ready to close the door against them. Don't do that to yourself. You, you, you are full of weaknesses. And so, the Bible says, give, uh, 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 do unto others as you want others to do unto you. Right? Is that the Bible? Or, you know, it's a saying. Hallelujah. Whatsoever a man swear, that shall he reap. If you are intolerant with men of God's weaknesses, people will be intolerant or heaven will be intolerant with you. If you don't respect the anointed, God will never show respect, or his angels will never show respect unto you. Are you telling me today? You must be a woman or a man that respects and honor. Treasure, man of God. 
If your if your family does not treasure men of God, if your family are so intolerant towards men of God, you are in the wrong side. You are in the wrong side. Because men of God are voices from God. They are angels from God. They are representative. And they are ministers of deliverance and ministers of healing. Ministers of healing that provoke the oil. Provoke the oil. It's a wrong thing for Samuel's parents to be criticizing Samuel or criticizing Eli. Just begin to talk about Eli, 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 Eli. And they are having rumors about Eli. Having rumors about Elijah. Talking about Elijah. Talking about Ezekiel. Talking about the priests, the Levi. Jeremiah, all of them, talking about them. Anyhow, Abraham, mesmerized. Can you imagine if that was happening in our days? Mighty prophets in the Bible that I'm sitting in my house talking about them. Anyhow, say this one likes money. This one, oh, likes look at this one, just like to wear suits, expensive. Look at this one, grab a service car. Look at this one, where's his money going to? Look at it. for what is that how you get blessed? These are the men of God that are channels for God's blessing in your life. And you begin to direct them by your words. So who are you going to run to? An angel will appear? After you spoke down on men of God? Who are you going to run to? And many of the crises you are going through is because you have talked about men of God. Left and right. That's why the Holy Ghost cannot fill you up. Because you have you, 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 are, you are so shocked. It's having to be arrogant and upset against the 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 the, 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 the Christians who are the, the the Islamists or those who are not Christians, those who are persecuting the Christians, it's having to be mad to bring them to Christ. You are here criticizing those who are who are leading the people to Christ. You are publicizing their weakness, looking for each one of them. Tell me the bi- person in the Bible that does that. Just tell me. Even Ananias and Sapphira, who was talking about finances and hid their finances, they died. Tell me the person that disrespected the men of God in the Bible. Is it the children that were laughing? They themselves suffered. So who? So who is the man of God? We don't have that back in the days in the Bible. But right now, there's so much error. Everybody laughing at men of God. Disrespecting them. Taking them anyhow. So who are you going to run to? A Catholic priest to bless you? I, mean, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. And we must repent from this nonsense. It's a sickness in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Sickness in the body of Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Right now, it's like your, 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 your flesh is so tender. Somebody says something, you are so quick quick to leave. Quick to go here. Quick to go here because you don't want to hear nothing. Don't hear nothing. When the Antichrist comes, you will hear. That's the day you will hear because when they deny you of food, they deny you of certain things. Then you will understand what they call pleasure and hardship. And those who really know how to carry that cross, is that they will know. The boys from the men. Hallelujah. Because right now, you don't, you don't, you are so, you don't want to let anybody talk to you like this. There is strong rebuke and there's correction. I don't even intend to talk like this today. But the Spirit of God says, say this to the people. Today, today, this morning. This morning. I don't know why, but the Lord is saying, say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. You cannot be too haughty that you begin to think that you can take the position of a man of God. Some of you don't want to take the position of a man of God, but refrain yourself from accusing men of God if you've not walked in their shoes. If you've not been in their shoes, if you've not waited upon God, if you've not fasted or saw the face of God. David was getting there. But did he criticize Saul? Did he talk about Saul? Did he, was he so angry about Saul? Yes, he did. There are many times he got angry. Many times he walked in all forgiveness. But God edited it from the Bible. It wasn't placed in the Bible. All those weaknesses was not displayed in the Bible. Why? It was to help us. It was to help us. You think Joshua did not murmur against Moses? Yes, he did. But he caught himself quickly and repented. You think people did not mess up? They messed up. But those that messed up, they repented. You think that Joshua was perfect all the ways? No. I myself have messed up myself. I know what I'm saying. But we have to repent. Somebody say repent. We have to what? Repent. Because why? The devil is what scratching you. Scratching you. Let me tell you. There's a mighty prophet that came from all the way from Nigeria. In Maryland. The man is an accurate prophet. He calls people by, by, by names. As he called people by names. That day he was calling people by names. And he called and called. That day I was so angry. Because he didn't call my name. So I went home. I was very angry. 
And I was like, why is he not calling my name? Why is he not calling my name? What kind of nonsense is this? I was just murmuring, talking and talking. Amen. Angry. Why did he call my name? Da, 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 da. Who are these people? Are they more anointed? I mean, come on, please. You're not telling me they pray more than me. Just carry on and on and on and on and on. He, he likes money. He this and this and that. Do you know that it was a devil that was putting those things in me? To make me angry, to disconnect me, to receive anything from God. Next day, my friend was knocking on the on my room door. Okay, let's go, let's go now. It's time for the event. I said, No, I'm not going. You're not taking shower? It's the, it's the service has started. I said, I'm not taking shower, I'm not going. And I was discouraged. For what? Why would I go there? I'm not going. Please. Can you tell me that you know, why is it only those old, old women that she's calling? I didn't know I'm not taking people in the meeting. Seriously, that was my that was my attitude. And the Lord said, discouragement is the last weapon before your blessings. I said, really? So I got caught up myself, took shower, and went to the service. Right in the service, you know, I love worship. Somebody now began to play worship. I went there, I began to repent. During the worship was so strong, I began to cry out to God. Repent of my attitude. Really repent. As I was repenting, godly sorrow came on me. Godly sorrow, once it comes on you, you start weeping. That is when the love of God overwhelms you. This love was so strong, I began to weep like a baby. Weep like a baby. My eyes were so red. You know that kind of weeping that you feel like somebody died? It was so deep, but it was the love of God pulsating through me. When the man of God came, the man of God says, Oh, I've been hearing, be hearing, be hearing for the last 24 hours. He called my name out. I was shocked. I was shocked. The only man of God he called out. I was shocked. And he read my mail. Before then, people don't know. People thought, oh, I was in the Holy Ghost all through. No. Before, before, shortly before God blesses you with a vessel, a spirit will come upon you. You start criticizing that vessel. That very vessel God wants to use to bless you. You start talking all kinds of nonsense. And you think it's from God. It's not from God. If you permit that spirit to... Look at... God he was about to use Moses to bless the people. They were thirsty for water. God has given Moses the rod of miracles. The same Moses carried the rod of miracles. The same guys understood that Moses, God has used Moses to strike the river. It divided, right? The same rod. And then you are testing now. You are not grumbling. Grumbling. Knowing that that is not permittable before God. That will incur the judgment of God. But you allow the devil to interrupt you. Or to, you might not be fornicating or committing adultery, but you are murmuring. Oh, Ray, you are just talking and getting angry discouraged and by those words he angered God he even angered Moses because Moses was so angry he struck the rock when God said he shouldn't have you had just spoken to the rock but God was so upset Moses was so upset even God said to Moses from this day you will not cross to the promised land you will see but you won't enter why because some carnal people were just un are you like that are, have you reached your, have you got to that place where you are so critical so critical if it doesn't if you, you're not patient enough you don't even examine yourself to understand that you are so use your mouth you're so you're so murmuring so it's complete 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 you need to sit down and say lord have mercy lord have mercy lord have mercy and truly repent from the depth of your heart then god will not release mercy i'm telling you what i'm telling you the man of god after i repented truly cleansed within the prophetic word came from him directly I loved him so much when that word came forth. I was like, what? I didn't expect it. But my attitude had to be right. And who was the person that was tempting me? Who was the person that was releasing those nonsense? It was the devil. Shortly before you get blessed, before you get anointed, you'll be tested. And that test will be to murmur and to complain. That test is what Jesus said. Why has that forsaken me? You could have said some other things. But he did not. He restrained himself. The Lord bless everyone today. The Lord bless everyone today in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless everyone today. He's, 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 I'm, I'm believing that in the name of Jesus that the Lord will begin to empower, strengthen, revive you by the power and the blood of Jesus. Amen? Don't, do not allow your house to be a place that talks about pastors. Talk about the enemy. Talk about other. Don't talk about pictures. I don't see that in the Bible. The only person that did that was uh, uh, Noah's uh, son. He 
the one that saw the nakedness. And that one even got cursed because seeing the father's naked. And that's the truth. When you're seeing the nakedness of your pictures, you are discussing nakedness of pictures. You are just introducing barrenness to your family. Finish. I will just say the truth. You wonder why you're so dry in the spirit. Because of that. And if somebody corrects you, you say, no, you're so adamant. So adamant. You will not receive the revival. Because people who respect or reference men of God are the ones that are ready for the oil. Let the oil flow on you. Amen? Do you know that if I intended to speak like this today, <laughs> if I intended to speak like this today, trust me, I wouldn't have come up like this. I believe when we're asking for the fire of God to fall upon us, I believe through the fire of God, the word of God came forth. I believe this is a word from the heaven. What world from the throne of grace. Amen. Um, the message today was to be abide in Christ. But we got to refrain that. We have to refrain that message. Amen. Change the message. My brother who is editing. Amen. Uh, we got to change the message. Uh, yeah. To suit this, this word of God that is coming forth now. Hallelujah. I was a preacher abiding on Christ. But after we got into the oven of God. God released the Rema word for today. We must repent for this year, this year 2017. All the idol words that has been spoken about men of God, publicized about men of God. Amen. Those days when people tell me about men of God, I usually get irritated, like disgusted from within. I mean, seriously, not, not because I was pretending to be. It was just a natural way of getting so angry. It was just, I was just, it was so icky to me. And nowadays, because you come around people who talk about it a lot, it's like, like, and I became like Isaiah that says, I dwell among people of unclean lips. Amen? It's like all of a sudden it became used to me, it became normal. It doesn't offend me anymore. I, I started participating with them. Today, I repent in the name of Jesus. As we enter 2018, no more all this negative stuff about men of God, all this nonsense. Hallelujah. All this nonsense, all those are set, those are set up, so are traps. One thing I will tell you is, is never talk about the men of God that God has put to bless you. Never. Never. Because the day you do it, you close the channel. In fact, you establish your prosecutor, which is the devil, to stand against you and to resist every blessing coming to you through the men of God. So if you criticize that man of God and he's trying to pray for you, you'll be dry. Because why? You, you, you open your mouth. But God said to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. So the more you pray for the man of God, the more you activate blessings upon him, upon your life. So the Bible says, give shall be given, good measure, praise and shake it together, and shall men render unto you. So the more you give accusations against the man of God, the more others will render unto you. But the more you give intercession, prayers, mercy, you show love through your words and your conversation. You appreciate them. You show you are you are tender towards their mistakes. You don't see them as angels. They mess up. You still love them. You still appreciate them. You still celebrate them. Amen. Then it will be rendered unto you. Men will begin to treat you the same way. Even demons will treat you with the reference, with respect. But when you don't respect men of God, even demons will not respect you. Amen. It's vice versa. That's the kingdom of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, I'm just gonna leave you to the scripture. I'm going to leave with the scripture. Hallelujah. I'm going to leave with the scripture. I believe it's in Proverbs. In Proverbs. I'm going to leave with the scripture. I think I even wrote it. I wrote it in the Bible. So. Hey, Kalabaraba Solos. Jesus. baby, Aparadosh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Where is that? Uh, I want to show you something very, very quick. Amen. And the case that those who are listening to me. God bless everyone today. Darling in. Hallelujah. You are loved and you are blessed. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Just a little patience there. Let me show you something quickly. I want to show you something very, very quick. And then we go, we are of here. Hallelujah. 
Kade Varaba Raba Baba Yabradi Shendere Baby Abaradish or Lord Alamodora Baba Rebebe Sakata Bahas. You know, one of the things that the Lord is really releasing now in this season is releasing His grace, is releasing His anointing, is releasing His presence. Amen. And these are the things, oh boy, color three percent left. Jesus, Holy Spirit, we we'll bless your name. We we'll bless your name. Okay, let me show you this thing very, very quickly. Hallelujah. So that uh, we are of here. Um, those on those on uh, Periscope, God bless you. Those on uh, watching me live and uh, listening to me on the pair line, uh, this is one of the things you gotta understand. Mm. Okay. Somebody says slander. Slander is, a, is, 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 is one of the things that has hindered a lot of people. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 101 verse 5. Psalm 101 verse 5. Let's, let's, let's go there quickly. Psalm 101 verse 5. Psalm 101 verse 5. I want somebody to read it out loud for me. Psalm 101 verse 5. My brother, can you read it for me? Hallelujah. Okay, go ahead. Read it for me, please. Psalm 101, verse 5. Yes. The devil secretly slanders his neighbor. Him I will destroy. One who has a haughty look and a proud heart, him I will not destroy. Okay. Somebody else. Yes. Amen. Thank you so much, brother. Somebody else. I want somebody else to read it again, too. Teresa, can you read it loud? Teresa. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, Sister Ida. Can you read the can you read that scripture loud, please? What scripture was that? Wow. So many people don't read. <laughs> Psalm 101, verse 5. So those who are watching me, you can record it. Psalm 101, verse 5. Just hold it now and check it. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, Psalm 101. Privilege. Yeah, go ahead. Also, privily slandereth his neighbor. Him will I cut off. Him that has a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. Him that has a high look. Hmm. So, he that privily slandereth his neighbor. Him what will I cut off? Meaning, you will, you, you will not experience his presence. The presence of God will be far away from you. Why? Because you, you, are, you are a man that... Slander it. Somebody says slander it. <laughs> read that. Read that. Read, read it again. Read it loud again. Read it loud again. Whoever slanders his neighbor in secretly, him will I put to silence. Whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart, him will I not endure. <laughs> Now you can see the unity between both of them. You can see the connection between both of them. Whoever prevalent slandereth his neighbor. Hallelujah. Amen. He said what? He didn't say man of God, though. He didn't, did he say man of God there? Eh? Huh? The word slander. What does the meaning of slander? Somebody talk to me. Huh? The word slander, it means accuse. Somebody say accuse. Based on the reports you hear, based on the reports you assume, that word slander, check it on the dictionary. Slander means what? Accuse. You sit down, you see the men of God on TV, you start talking. It doesn't bring blessing, it's a curse. Him will I, will I what? Cut off. A proud look. So when the pride is present, 
pride provokes you to begin to talk and slander men of God. He's not even saying your neighbor. He's not even talking about men of God. He's talking about your neighbor. If God judges and cuts off you because you talk about your neighbor, how much more those who are men of God? Jesus. Thorough repentance is needed before you get baptized. Before you get on fire. Are you hearing me today? Because if, 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 you, if you go to heaven now, they might not allow you to enter heaven because in the gate of heaven, they open their book of life. They realize, they see that your name and they, they might not see your name there. They might find your name in the book of death. And all, the, all is written on you is slander, slander, slander. You might not be committing fornication adultery, but you are slandry, slandry, slandry. Amen? So you want to be very... Somebody say, be careful. Somebody say, be careful. We live in the end time whereby his spirit has released is released on people now. It's unbiblical. It was only, the only person that tried it was that God wrote in the Bible were people that spoke. The people that were documented that spoke against men of God came under serious judgment. How I many of you know that? The people that spoke against men of God that were documented in the Bible, they did not go scot free. Do you remember that? Do you know that? How much more? those who spoke against the neighbor hallelujah praise god it is well though all these people that are snoring they are blessed in the name of jesus hallelujah well god bless everyone today amen you are lifted hallelujah i have to let you go amen thank you man oh god bless you how I many of you will specially pray for me today before you go to bed? Lord, anoint your servant. How I many of you sincerely? Okay, I want I want somebody to I want somebody to write it on the fridge and says, Lord, um, I'm going to pray for Pastor Bay. I mean, you, I mean, I'm not asking for offering. I'm asking for prayer. Uh -huh. So somebody asked me. Somebody asked me. She said, Why do you ask prayer from them? Why do you ask prayer for the members? I said, Look at this lady. Don't I pray for you? What's wrong with you? And she wasn't asking me in a joking way. She was meaning it. Like, it's an offense to ask for. It's like I was asking too much from people. Why are you asking for prayer from mem members? Yeah. I said, ah. That's not too much. I said, ah. I said, sister, you need, you need deliverance. Not you need, I said, you need deliverance. The spirit that is on you is serious. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. We all need help. Ah. To ask for prayer is humility. It's acknowledging your weakness. And acknowledging that you are not a master. Then people don't ask for prayers because they don't, they don't want you to pray for their pastor on the pulpit. Because they don't want, they want, they, they want to feel that they are strong and they are mighty. They don't need prayers. I remember a pastor said to me, he said, keep your prophecy. You are trying to use me to shine with your prophecy. Ah. You see, you are trying to use me to shine. You are trying to... <laughs> you, you, you are trying to exalt yourself with prophecy using me. I said, ah. Is that the way people see prophecy? Despise prophecy. <laughs> Jesus. Knowing fully well that I know something you don't know and you know something I don't know. But they feel like you are trying to prophesy, you are trying to take the glory. Eh. <laughs> That's what they call perverted thinking. So... But I beg of you in the name of Jesus, amen, less, less value. Listen to me, seriously, in all seriousness now, in this altar of fire and glory, everyone listen to me now, amen. From today, make it a conscious moment. God talks about the neighbor, he privileged slandered his neighbor. Now, forget about neighbor now. I'm talking about men of God now. Once you start with the men of God first, amen, hallelujah. If, if, if you can walk on the men of God first, and you can get delivered from that, talking about men of God, then we can now increase your consecration and start talking about what? Start talking about what? Fellow people. Amen? Because right now, people cannot uh, control themselves from uh, 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 talking about neighbors. How much more men of God? 
man of God one is too much because it's so sweet. It's, it's a sweet discussion. Everybody's talking about it. So everybody's, they have leprosy all over there. And leprosy is contagious. Once that you allow that person to start talking about men of God, if, if, if you don't stop them, it will flow into you. And if it, if it flows into you, it, it, amen, you start contributing to kill the fire. God says, privately, I will cut him off a high look. I will cut him off. Meaning, he will not, it will not be, it will, it will be the outer court. It will, it, other people who experience God's presence, he will not experience it. Because he's slanderer, he's a slanderer. And if you're a slanderer, and when you're repenting before God, you might be repenting for other sins. I committed adultery, Lord have mercy. I stole, okay, Lord forgive me. If you don't ask God for forgiveness for that slandering spirit, you realize that you will never experience his presence. But when you say, Lord, I forgive me, I did it yesterday. I'm so sorry. Today again, and you still mess up. And God will still be showing you mercy. He will still be showing his love. But if it becomes a, a, a an iniquity, and you won't look at it as grace, you don't even ask God for forgiving that area. Ah, your, your, your judgment is, is certain. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 But you, you, it is well, okay? I want you to be strong. I want you to, 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 to everybody to stay on fire this day. I thank God for this message. I thank God for what God has spoken to us today. Uh, truly, truly, we are blessed in Jesus' name. Truly, truly. And, amen. Well, let me know if you are blessed today. All right. We well, love you guys now. Uh -huh. you know, some of you don't forget. Don't forget the prayer line, anyways. So just keep us in your prayers. Oh, all right. Well, God bless you guys. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, you know the. Okay. God bless you, everyone on Periscope. God bless you. Um, those on the.